Today, I will talk to you about the work we do to analyze genetic networks. Genetic networks show relationship between genes and can help to identify biological modules, disease-related genes, and even long-range interactions. One group of network analysis method is information propagation, where a signal is transferred from a source node, such as a disease gene, to the rest of the network and the signal received on the other nodes represent the level of relatedness to the source node. This way, we can identify related genes with long-range interactions, even if they have no direct interactions. Here, we aim to identify effector and sensor genes, which are distinguished by their ability to transmit and receive information. And we adapted perturbation response scanning, PRS, method that was initially developed to identify allosteric residues and long-range interactions within a protein structure. This allowed us to model information propagation process with no time dependence and no prior knowledge. PRS works on elastic network models, where a network is represented by a collection of springs. The perturbations are applied in the form of a force on each node sequentially, and the fluctuations on the other nodes due to this perturbation is the response. Mathematically, what we do is to get the Laplacian matrix of the network and apply eigenvalue decomposition. The eigenvalues and eigenvectors then can be used to calculate PRS matrix where rows show the perturbed genes and columns show the responding genes and the colors are the long range interaction between these two. In addition to that, we can calculate row and column averages, and these would represent effectiveness and sensitivity profiles, which are the ability to transmit or receive information. In this project, we analyze yeast genetic interaction profile similarity network, published by Costanzo et al. in 2016. On this network, nodes are genes, and edges represent the functional similarities between those genes. By applying PRS on Costanzo network, we identified effector and sensor genes which show highest effectiveness and sensitivity values. On this network, you can see that effectors are positioned in clusters towards the center of the network and sensors are positioned on the periphery and less clustered. We see that they are not directly connected and we also see that both effectors and sensors show gene ontology enrichments in a variety of categories. One question we had was whether the PRS results we got are expected for a given degree distribution. We checked this by generating randomly rewired networks with same degree distribution. We see that both effectiveness and sensitivity values, as well as their correlation with degree are significantly different from random networks. This suggests that our results are not simply derived by degree. Finally, when we investigated the shortest paths between these effectors and sensors, we discovered interesting biology. For example, we see that effectors that are related to mitochondrial respiration and sensors that are related to tricarboxylic acid cycle are connected by respiratory gene regulation genes. Similarly, these effectors are connected to sensors related to ion transport via mitochondrial transportation genes. We can use this information to discover new genes on these pathways. For example, PO19 here is an unknown gene which might have a function on ion transport to mitochondria. To conclude, we adapted a structural biology method to genetic networks to detect long-range relationships between genes. Using this method, we identified effectors and sensors that are involved in different biological processes, which are important for signal propagation on the network. We can identify biological pathways between effectors and sensors, which will allow us to detect unknown genes that facilitate signal transfer on these pathways. Finally, I would like to acknowledge the funding by NIH and thank you for listening.